Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another wonderful commencement at Centenary College. I will note that as one of the conditions for us being able to have all of our wonderful guests here, we do need to be all masked all the time, so I appreciate your uh, going along with that requirement. At this point, I would ask you to uh, rise and join the Centenary Choir in singing the National Anthem and remain standing for the invocation by the Reverend Kalen Walker. Let us assume a posture of prayer. O creator of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, we pause this morning to acknowledge the blessings that have made this special day possible. We also remember all that we've lost in the last year amidst the historic pandemic that brought our world to a sudden halt. We are grateful for the opportunity that these graduates have had to study here at Centenary College, for the classes that have challenged them, the internships that have taught them valuable skills, the late night conversations that have expanded their worldviews, and so much more. We are grateful for the community that these graduates found here Indeed, these graduates have not been alone in this journey. They have shared these years with friends, classmates, devoted faculty and staff, and their experiences have been enriched as a result. We are grateful that these graduates can celebrate today surrounded by loving family and friends. We cherish the memory of those family members and loved ones who are not here with us today yet we feel their spiritual presence with us. We recognize the sacrifices that so many of these families have made for these graduates, and we honor them for their selfishness. As we end this academic year, and as these graduates chart new beginnings, grant that in a world of division, these graduates might be agents of reconciliation that in a world of conflict, these graduates might be agents of peace, that in a world of injustice, these graduates might be agents of justice, that in a world of unfairness, these graduates might be agents of equity, and that in a world in which so many are pushed to the margins, these graduates might through their work draw all to the center. O oh, Holy One, as these graduates step forward into new places with new people and new experiences filled with various triumphs and challenges, let each one of them know that they will always be with us as part of the beloved seminary community. Amen. Amen.
may be seated. A reading from the epistle of James, chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. The New Revised Standard Version says, My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, Consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing.
Thank you, Reverend Walker, and thanks to Dr. Hobson, the Centenary Choir, and Professor Hundemere and the Wind Ensemble. Thank you. That's one of our favorite songs around here, but it's a tearjerker. Uh, thank you. Welcome to our celebration honoring the entire centenary community. I want to recognize especially members of our board of trustees who are both here on the podium with me and uh, in the audience, our faculty and staff, friends, families, moms, dads, guardians, grandparents. I'd ask all of those people who have served, including especially family, that have shepherded this class to this important point, please stand and let us recognize you. That's all y'all, stand up. <laughs> Just a little bit, one of the traditions of Centenary is a, a few demographic facts about the class of 2021. We have 54 students who are graduating with institutional or sometimes called Latin honors. We have nine students that completed their career at Centenary with a perfect 4.0 uh, average. Yeah, that's worth it. <laughs> We have 15 students that have received special honors from their department. Today we'll be recognizing individuals that are earning 65 BAs and 66 bachelors of science and seven graduate degrees. We have 14 students earning double majors and we have 12 students earning dual degrees. That includes uh, almost a, a full year of credit hours worth of extra work. We have students that have 42 students that have completed minors. 52% of our undergraduates played a sport in their time here at Centenary. Our student athletes are amazing. I do want to recognize, and Dr. Soule will follow up on this, we do have 12 graduating seniors that are participating in the SCAC baseball tournament in Texas, and they will be presented their diplomas on the mound there. We have 13 legacy graduates. Their parents or, or other uh, family members have graduated from Centenary. We have one child of a current staff member. We have one international student from Australia graduating this year. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. We have uh, nine states represented, Arkansas, California, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Montana, Texas, Tennessee, and Vermont. We have 23 of the parishes of Louisiana represented. And perhaps most importantly, you seniors have done such an amazing job representing Centenary at research conferences, theater and choir performances, athletic events. You've won prestigious awards, national level awards, and we are so proud of you. Congratulations. I really don't have too much more to say that I haven't said to these graduates in, in a couple of different venues over the last few weeks. It has been a difficult 15 months for sure. And you all, thanks to your own hard work and the hard work of the faculty and staff here, have completed an amazing journey. And as the choir just sang, we look forward to watching you go out into the world, but then return to us somehow. Welcome and congratulations. It's now my privilege to introduce our commencement speaker, Dr. Melva Williams. She is a presidential leadership scholar and has worked in higher education for over 15 years. She currently serves as the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs and Enrollment Management at Southern University in Shreveport and was formerly an Associate Dean of the College at Centenary College. She and I did not have a chance to work together while she was on the staff here, but almost the minute I walked in the front door, people said, we got to figure out a way to get Melva Williams back. And uh, we have not successfully gotten her back on the staff, but I did convince her to become, become a trustee and sits on our board, as I'll say again in a minute. Uh, Melva is very active in state and national service and received numerous commendations commemorating her dedication. She's an, an alumna of Leadership Louisiana, 40 Under 40, 
and was named by the Shreveport Chamber of Commerce as the top professional of the year and in 2018 won the Athena Award. Most notably, she was one of 61 people selected in America to participate in the Presidential Leadership Scholars Program affiliated with three former American presidents, George H.W. Bush, William Clinton, and George W. Bush. She is a board member for us here at Centenary College of Louisiana. She also serves on the board of the Robinson Film Festival, Film Center, I should say, the Caddo Council on Aging, the YWCA, the Excellence, uh, Extensions of Excellence, Christus Hospital Board Strategy Subcommittee. One of the things that's most interesting about her, and I hope you get a chance to chat with her either today or sometime, I had the welcome opportunity to uh, sit next to her on a plane ride, and she told me all about this. She's the co-founder of the Higher Education Leadership Foundation, and it's an amazing uh, organization that she uh, mentors and nurtures uh, future leaders in higher ed. She is the vice president of the Shreveport Charter Foundation that built the Magnolia School of Excellence, and she serves as the vice president and chief operating officer for the Success Training Institute. Please welcome me, welcome, sorry, please join me in welcoming my friend, Dr. Melva Williams. just to get this far. 
No, you have a magnificent life to live. You have successes to obtain, lives to change, innovations to develop, stories to tell, lives to save, children to uplift, policies to create, legislation to change, laws to eradicate, technology to develop, companies to run, chemical formulas to create, environments to study, research to conduct, kids to teach, music to compose. You didn't get this far just to get this far. You've got more work to do. You have history to make, mistakes to overcome, problems to solve, cultures to immerse yourself in. You've got screenplays to write and you have theater to do. You've got religion to study, art to manifest, like Bezos and Bill Gates, you've got money to make. No, you didn't get this far just to get this far. So now that you have been properly poured upon the shore of life, and those of us who have been working on the land are ready for you, and we clearly need help, and you are the help that we've been waiting for. The world needs your ideas, your intellect, and your energy, your boldness. We also could use your ability to keep us entertained on TikTok sometimes. <laughs> Just saying, y'all got that thing. Yeah. So let me tell you again, you didn't get this far just to get, to get this far. We need you to be bold and confident and creative, to always do more than expected and never less than your best. Now some of you might be kind of on the inside, just a tad bit nervous about leaving the mighty sea of centenary and crashing onto the shore. Let me give you some words of comfort. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 13 and 6, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Joshua 1 and 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Deuteronomy 31 and 6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For he is the Lord who goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. And if you get dismayed, you can always remember the rapper DJ Khaled when he said, all I do is poop. <laughs> Graduates, do not fret over if you made the right choice in grad school or if you accepted the best job offer at the perfect salary. Or concern yourself if your parents are going to take you back for just a hot second until you get it all together. I've talked to them. They do. <laughs> Then we talk to you. Clap if you're going to let your child come back for a high school. Yeah, the hell is your tax and you're going to find it. But don't worry, because the Bible also tells us in Romans 8 and 28 that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. And the other good news is that over the course of the years that you have been within the mighty sea of centenary, you have been ably prepared for the choices you will make next. As you know, the faculty here at Centenary who have helped you prepare are simply the best. They are the motors of great minds and do not find it to be robbery to pour into students who have come for the rigor of their education. Let's take a moment to give your faculty, staff, the people who labored in the vineyard for you to ensure that you are ready for the shore of this world around the fall. Destiny, if your efforts will look effortless. 
Well, let me give you some facts about your feelings. Thoughts of negativity and doubt are considered to be self-sabotage and self-sabotage has never helped anybody anywhere reach any goals, no day, no time. When you allow your mind to sow seeds of negativity and you water those negative thoughts with conversations of pessimism, then you will ultimately lose and you are not a loser. If you tell yourself that you aren't good enough or that you just can't be on time to work or you just can't be organized or that you'll never make a million or a billion dollars or you can't do this or you can't do that, then those are the things that will manifest in your life. What you say grows, so you must always seek positivity in your life. Don't use your energy to worry, use your energy to believe. I encourage you to speak your dreams out loud. Don't just write them down in your journal or pray your little requests quietly in your head or cut out your photos like you do once a year for your vision board. You must speak your goals. You must use your words to command things to happen. What you say about your future will be. Once you say it, your actions will follow. Now I know Dr. Karen Soul and all of you fine people ask me to just come and facilitate me, be a commencement speaker. But I've also decided that I will come and help facilitate a funeral service. And the funeral is for your negative thoughts and words. Bury your anxiety six feet in the ground and don't mark the ground. <laughs> and for this day, day, let your self-doubt go and sweep up the confetti from your pitchy party. <laughs> Trust me, graduates, you are ready to leave. You're ready to do the things that sitting there has prepared you to do, and your time is now. The last thing I would encourage you to do if you haven't done it already, outside of Jesus, along your journey to success, I encourage you to find yourself a best friend. I know it may sound trivial and all, but what I'm telling you is important. If you don't have a person in your life that can serve as a life partner and a witness to your future, a witness to your legacy, then put that on your to-do list. And if you already have a bestie husband, in all of your success that you're bound to receive, trust me, you'll want someone there who you can celebrate with. This best friend will be the person you think to call when you get that big contract or when you find out that you successfully defended your thesis in grad school, or this will be the person that you kind of talk slack with about everybody behind their backs and they won't tell anybody. It will be the person who will tell you the truth no matter what. Trust me, you need a compromise. Someone who makes you want to be better, holds you accountable. Someone who is encouraging, fun-loving, and energetic. Someone who has a great laugh and is focused and is driven and is a giver, is charismatic. Once you find that best friend, the one that encourages you, then your job is to be a best friend right back. Proverbs 18 and 24 says, A man that has friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sits closer to the brother. And if you find a friend like that, then you can go far together. Lead together. Change this world together. Don't be like me and give up on way too many things. I'm telling you, I've done a lot. Now, I'm going to share with you some of my personal failures, and some of you will understand these failures right away, and some of you will might get them in the car. So first, one of my big failures, guys, um, you know, I had a gig right out of college was a fortune teller in a tarot card room. And I gave up because it just was no future in it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I gave up, I was reading a paper about how they could treat the chickens in the chicken farms. And I just thought that was terrible. So I gave up eating Chick-fil-A on something. <laughs> I thought that was, I just gave up. I, I was a taxi driver once in New York and Gave that up because it was just entirely too much talking about my back. <laughs> Couldn't handle it. And in 2020, during the pandemic, I gave up on my family's farm in Homer, Louisiana. We had cattle, and then uh, we decided to add cannabis on the farm to supply.
supply the you know doctors with medical cannabis and I just couldn't keep the cattle and the cannabis because the stakes were getting entirely too high. <laughs> Thank you, Melva. Daddy, I think she did okay. <laughs> Happy birthday. Way to, way to produce a great girl. 
I also think we're going to have to add to Dr. Williams' uh, title, uh, Commencement Speaker for Life. So, um, <laughs> now the college confers its highest recognition, the honorary degree. At this point, I would ask the chairman of our board of trustees, Mr. David Barlow, to escort Mr. Leroy Harvey to the podium. There's a creed that guides him with sage advice and practical applications of faith, relationships, business, and government. Its influence has blessed him with a successful career and earned him many of the sought-out accolades of the professional world. But those who know him best know that his greatest contributions stem from a single, culminating tenet of his creed, the truth that service to humanity is the best work of life. Service to humanity that is authentic, transformative, and enduring rests on a simple yet powerful conviction, a belief in the inherent goodness of people. He holds this credo before him like a trusted guide, infusing his acts of service with a peacemaker's heart and the belief that humans, though imperfect, are engaged in a constant journey forward toward growth and goodness and grace. Finding himself often in a position to enact great change, he has always answered the call. From supporting research into crucial health issues affecting Louisiana, to stewardship of its natural environment, to championing STEM education for K through 12 students, he has opened doors for many others to experience the joy and fulfillment that are the fruits of his own educational opportunities and habits of lifelong learning. This passion for education and knowledge is now an important point of intersection between his story and that of this college, but it was not the first. There's a deeper connection for our roots and his are sunk in the same soil, Jackson, Louisiana, a 200-year-old community hugging the border between the modern-day East and West Feliciana parishes. A happy land, according to the name inherited from Spanish colonists. With a love of history and a deep sense of pride, he has worked tirelessly to preserve, restore, and uplift this happy land and his hometown, including the remains of the original Centenary Campus and the Centenary State Historic Site. From in investing in Jackson's hospitality industry to co-producing an original musical production celebrating the history of the Felicianas, he has articulated a clear vision for how the rich past of his beloved home can help shape its future. For propelling forward, but always nurturing your roots, for prioritizing our shared passion for knowledge and learning, for saving your best work for the service of humanity, Centenary College is proud to bestow upon you, Leroy Harvey, the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa. And so by the authority vested in me by the state of Louisiana and the Board of Trustees of Centenary College of Louisiana, I do now confer and bestow upon you, Leroy Harvey, the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. And Mr. Barlow will help me bestow the hood and the diploma. Today, seniors, you become members of the Centenary College Alumni Association, joining many other women and men that are here with us in this room, many of our trustees, faculty, and administrative staff, also alumni, and that are here with us. If you are an alum of Centenary College, I'd ask you now to please stand and let us recognize you.
I got off script for a minute because I think this is cool too. If you're not an alum, but somebody in your family is a centenary alum, just raise your hand. A lot of folks in, in Shreveport. You have chosen Mr. Reggie Porter as your class speaker. And you all know this, but let me tell some of the other folks about Reggie. He's from Colfax, Louisiana. He majored in psychology and will graduate summa cum laude with departmental honors. He is a lead resident assistant. He's an Omicron Delta Kappa and Chi Psi Honor Society. He's a maroon jacket. He's heading to North Carolina, well, North Carolina State. No, that's okay. Uh, he's, headed to North, he's headed to North Carolina State to study for his master's in clinical mental health counseling. He'll love it, that's my hometown. It'll be great. And he will join us now to induct you into the Alumni Association, your fellow graduate, Mr. Reggie Porter.
Thank you, Reggie. We'll miss you. Madam Provost, I turn it to you. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to take just a moment to recognize one of our faculty members today. Retiring from the faculty this year is our director of the music library and lecturer in music, Mr. Tom Hunter. You may or may not be able to see him above me as he is directing our wind ensemble. <laughs> Madam Provost, will you present the candidates for degrees in course? By the authority vested in me by the State of Louisiana and the Centenary Board of Trustees, College of Louisiana, I do now confer and bestow upon you your bachelor's degree and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. By authority vested in me by the State of Louisiana and the Board of Trustees of Centenary College of Louisiana, I do now confer and bestow upon each of you your master's degree and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. Congratulations.
Piper Elizabeth Fire. Thank 
congratulations. Melissa M. Sizemore. Congratulations. Well done. Harrison McQueen Sterrett. Congratulations. Brennan A. Tumbleton. Congratulations. Well done. Alenia Blythe Watley. Congratulations. Well done. Maria Ann Zabani. I recognize now those graduating cum laude. This indicates that they have an overall grade point average of 3.5 to 3.69. Keely Preston Adair. Congratulations. Well done. Sarah Elizabeth Campinky. Congratulations, well done. Andrew Charles Eccles. Congratulations, well done. 
congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.
thank you all and, and thank you for coming. We will have made the governor happy because we finished in less than an hour and a half, so that's, that's good. Uh, I do have a few closing instructions for you. Uh, as one last piece of compliance, I would ask that you proceed outside uh, after some other stuff and meet your graduates uh, out on the north lawn uh, uh, in front of the Gold Dome, on the north side of the Gold Dome. We do have bottled water and soft drinks there for you. At this point, I'd ask you to rise as we close these ceremonies. We will sing the alma mater and receive the benediction given by Reverend Walker. Thank you for coming. God bless you all, especially God bless the honored class of 2021. from this place in joy as you celebrate your achievement here today. May you go forth with confidence knowing that your learning inside and outside the classroom has prepared you well. May you go forth in unity as you take your gifts and give them to the world. May you go forth with freedom realizing that there's so much more to see, enjoy, and discover. Now go forth and may grace be with you, graduates, and with us all. Thank you.